<laughs> I mean, I, I can I can put some yoga pants on my wish list. The I hell do you mean if? <laughs> eh, fair enough. And welcome back to another Linux Gaming Cast Weekly, the show that covers the latest Linux gaming news, reviews, how tos, and most importantly, whatever the hell else we come up with. What is up, beautiful people? It is almost New Year's Eve. It is the um time to be afraid. We're done with Christmas. Nothing exploded. Hanukkah's been over for a minute, hasn't it, Jordan? Maybe. I don't know. <laughs> Pedro. Is that correct or incorrect? I have no idea. <laughs> Just because I look like Jesus Christ doesn't mean I'm Jewish. Oh, oh no. no Hanukkah's not. Quiet <laughs> Hanukkah. Kylo Mateus. Um, Hanukkah is over Monday. Hanukkah Monday is, is over last Monday. Time. See, bringing you hard facts right out of the gate. Hey, beautiful people. I'm Ben Stone. Every week, I'm joined by uh, the Funk Soul Brother of Canada. Check it out now. Oh, look at him. It's Jordan Swing. Right That's about right. now. And Pedro Totes, not an elf. Kylo not Ren. Check it out. There it is. I mean, that's his you could shot. make the argument. Yeah. No, that's more. That's more. That's more Edward Scissorhandies. Yeah. Uh, Hen <laughs> Dude, what was it last night? Uh, at <laughs> Billy Blade Fingers or something like that. Chucky, Chucky, Chucky Chop Hands. Dude, I don't know. It, it 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 was bad enough to where if like, that could be a porn. I was like, I would not want to watch that. And hey, you're joining us live, chat room dynamic, helping us form Cocaine Motron. Oh, have we been up to anything fun? No. No? No. 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 <laughs> Staying home, not doing much of anything. You, looks... you, you, you're, you're trying to get like Bayonetta up and running on Linux, right? Dude, I took that adventure, man. I'm like, hmm. You know, the first step to buying something is to see if you can get out of buying something. Because I'm like, I want to play Bayonetta too. I want to play it, you know, and share it around. And it's like, do I have to get a Wii U? And it's like, well, you can either get a Wii U, or you should, everyone's telling me to buy a Switch. I'm like, do it, oh. do it. No, I want. I, I only play retro consoles. Do it. Dynify it. Um, <laughs> do it. Yeah. CMU uh, Strider. I broke out the uh, fabulous uh, Lutris. And it's like, boom, Lutris. Oh, look. They get a little script, did that, did that, loaded up Bayonetta, and it technically launches. And I'm still probably going to end up buying a Wii U at some point. But, check that out. Got, got some new threads from <laughs> Frank's Frank. wearing your sweat. Your right, sweat. It is. That's not mine anymore, man. I've lost control I, I of it. I, I don't know, Vin, do you, do you run into this problem at all? We're like... So there, there's there's that scene in Pulp Fiction where after they blow up Philomar's head, um, mm -hmm. they, they 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 go to Quentin Tarantino's house and he, he has like clothes for them, right? Like that could not happen for me because like yeah, I got some spare clothes for you. They won't fit. No. Oh. Yeah, me, me and Frank are roughly the same size, dude. All yeah. right, he's being all cool and shit right now. Uh, fuck, sassy bitch is the only way to describe <laughs> Frank when I'm trying to get a damn sweater on him. But his hair and shit's getting all messed up. And I'm we like, need someone to move uh, Frank's hand now and smack Van across the back of the head. It, it's, it's like trying to put a sweater on a cat, right? Like it's just all claws and teeth and biting. And but he's rocking the um, sweet vampire llama from Don M. Thanks again for that. It's uh, another level of added confusion to anyone who has the misfortune of walking into this particular room. They're like, you know what? Roll with it. How about you, Pedro? Did you uh, get some things to? You got something to your right there. But oh yes, I suppose I I should mention the fact that uh, what um, well there was a thing about Carl sending me some T pins uh, a while back. Well, he didn't just send me the T pins. He also sent me some um, acoustic foam pads. Mm -hmm. See, and here they are. That, that's why Carl's a better person than I am, because I was a down with just getting you the deep ends. <laughs> like, ha, ha. <laughs> I mean, I got, I got to use them now, so that's nice. <laughs> now, here's a fair question: Where are you at on your T pin supply? Because when I uh, like had to redo this and move everything, look at the fuck wall; it's gorgeous. Um, I was looking at my box of t-pins you're like i'll never use i'm down to like 16 <laughs> as everyone goes to their t-pin collection mine is, mine is still mostly full i'm trying to find the angle where i don't spill a bunch of t-pins on my desk oh 
A transparent box, bitches. <laughs> <laughs> well, la di da, Mr. Uh, plastic Man, living in your plastic <laughs> land. <laughs> With, 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 with your foam, you know, you know what else is not made out of plastic? Nope. The horse. Uh uh-uh. uh It's it's Don't just made it. out of goop. Monster. It's goop. It's the steam. Adopted. Of the last Adopted. week of 2019. Woo. Ooh. Here we go. And uh, you know, uh, uh, I mentioned uh, that the end of the year uh, brings about some vapid, vapid end of year lists uh, on uh, LWDW. And, well, I guess it spilled over a little bit onto Linux Gamecast Weekly because the best of Steam 2019. And you can go to the Steam store and select a couple of different categories. You have the top sellers, the top new releases, the top VR games, the top early access graduates, and uh, the top most played or most simultaneous players at once uh, for games. And apparently, uh, The Witcher 3 got a big bump because of the Netflix series. Go figure. Uh, (laughs) The... Uh, there were, uh, in the top sellers and the top new releases, there were actually a fair few games that we threw chairs at over the year. And um, in the top sellers, I did notice that in the platinum bit, um, there were four free-to-play games. Mm-hmm. Explain I mean, that to me. Microtransactions, zero, zero, maybe. Zero uh, is the amount of money you can spend. Dude, you gotta get those hats, son. Uh, rocket cars still print money, so I guess that was a good buy for yeah, Epic, yeah. you know. I look yeah. forward to probably, possibly not being able to play the Epic version or whatever, however they managed to separate that from Steam, because yes, that is coming. Tomb Raider, we got that. That's rocking bronze in the sales, and I did notice Code Vein, still too expensive for my cheap ass. Yeah, it didn't come out this year. (laughs) Yeah, honestly, there's like very few uh, Linux game, Linux native games compared to last year. There were a lot more on the list. That little Steam icon was a lot more common. But given the fact that we have like a mature-ish Proton now, we can actually play a bunch of the games that are, you know, on this list. Oh, yeah. Mm Warframe works. I tried that. Except for Destiny 2. You'll get your ass banned if you even try. (laughs) <laughs> I, I mean, easy Andy cheat aside, Epic has a reason to slow down the development on the Proton compatible version of that. Yeah, right. Yeah. It, that, 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 that's where Strider's 25 grand came from. They're just like, we're just going <laughs> to allocate this budget <laughs> over to this guy. Seems legit. It's better than that time they're like, hey guys, why don't you port our game to Linux with wine? That was that was, that was the oh that guys. was um, topware yeah, top top yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that happened yeah, uh, so um, speaking of uh, you know bringing your games to Linux and you may remember that one of the first ones that actually worked if you were to download the beta for um, Steam on Linux was a Team Fortress Two and if you did start the game you would get the teeny tiny little uh, penguin plushie. For your character. Well, this isn't it. This mm. is the other penguin. This is the other penguin that uh, is fixed now. And uh, according it's to... Yeah, it's Pebbles the penguin. And um, to there was a, a problem because it uh, it's a shoulder-mounted penguin in the game, apparently. And <laughs> with the heavy model, the heavy, um, heavy weapons guy character model, there was some issues, but it's fixed now. Yeah, I'm, I'm just, also, I'm just they updated the Disco and- Vision. Disco Vision, man. It's a thing. <laughs> it's when you take a bunch of acid and watch John Travolta movies. Uh, no, I'm just happy that he- the Heavy and Pebbles the Penguins are on speaking terms again. I was I was, I was really yeah. invested in that drama. I'm completely down. Do you act- Is this something Windows users can get to? Probably. Yeah, it's just Pebbles I, I, the I Penguins. Mean, I mean, one of the rare. I, 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 mean, uh, I mean, to get to get to the to get drops. to the. <laughs> to get to the other penguin, they had to install the Linux VM. So they did. There, there was like a one-click package on Windows. Yeah, it was an EXE. It. You'd click, it would start the VM, put you in the game, and then just kill it. There, done. <laughs> man, that's I. I don't know. Hey, man, some people install like seven Linux, whatever. Uh, <laughs> we get to talk about Zen. It's out. It's released. Um, and there's a holiday sale. You can get it for fifteen ninety nine. What is Zen? You never heard of it. It's the remake, uh, sanctioned by Valve, of the original Half-Life. Oh, dang it. It's not an AMD processor. Mm. 
Black Mesa, you know it. And this is the last level that has been in development almost as long as the game, and I'm only slightly exaggerating. But it's there. You can play it. One of the things with the um, latest update that just came out is apparently they've sorted some of the performance regressions and issues that people were having under Linux. One of them being the 15 minutes it took to finish the tram ride. Because mm. <laughs> it hit some weird shaders or something. And I mean, it went to three to six FERPs to where I'm like, hey, man, I, I want to play a little bit of this. I've never played through Half-Life and I was going to do it on the stream. And in order to get that save game, I just had to let it sit and go do some dishes. Seems seems, seems legit. No. So the, the, the other thing, too, is this isn't the final release either. They're calling this uh, not point nine. Um, they, uh, 1.0, they, they list out their goals for that. It seems to be a lot of like QA related stuff. So like fixing performance regressions, finding stability They're, They want people to play test stuff more because they want to see if they can like tweak balance to make things more challenging. If it needs to be more challenging or less challenging, if it's just overwhelming. Um, one, one thing that's a little sad is they did stop you from being able to bail out of the cart before the ending though. Just be like, oh, G-Man's like secret I'm going to save you. And I'm going to be like, no bitch. Bye. <laughs> <laughs> yeah and they also healed the g-man's case of the scurvy in that uh final scene as well because apparently um his teeth were turning black oh mm. yeah <laughs> i'm, I'm looking glad you finally to... drank some top pine tea yeah right um synergy come on we're, we're getting close i yeah, yeah, it. they did promise that. Uh, well, they did say it was it was once it was out, uh -huh. and I guess not point nine doesn't technically qualify as out. I, listen, man, I'm gonna I'm be like, yo, dude, nah, it's really one point oh because they're like they, they made that bet going. I will never be finished. We don't have to worry. About that. <laughs> <laughs> I, 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 I don't know. I'm I'm just curious to see what because like synergy introduces some considerable jank. To Half Life Two, I'm curious what it'll do to a Black Mesa. <laughs> you know, according to them, they've really cleaned up the code base quite a bit. So eh, maybe well, it's better I, now. <laughs> I, I, I mean, I mean, it can it can only be so good to a point because you're injecting multiplayer into a primarily single player game. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> so it's very clear that some things are just not going to work well. Like the game wasn't. I mean, technically, the engine API uh, exposes that kind of functionality. It's just that they didn't actually expect people to try it. The the, the levels don't. <laughs> That's for <Yeah>. sure. <laughs> so let's talk about something that it's not a new game. In fact, it came out uh, last year, but ah. it now has a Linux version in beta that you can play with. Yes. It's a it's a futuristic racing game. Uh, it, the the cars sort of remind me of like the racers from Connecticut for the PlayStation Two. You but, know, um, I, I love living in this world now because I can look at that picture that we're looking at and it's like that looks more tame than a Cybertruck. Cybertruck. <laughs> um, <laughs> but yeah, uh, but it's 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 an early access. They have uh, a Linux version now, which is kind of nice. Um, you can, you can, you can play that. Um, they got some 240p the, trailer video. Yeah. Yes. But <laughs> the, 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 the problem is it's a racing game. It doesn't mm -hmm. have online multiplayer. Don't so, worry, Jordan. We can use the magical technology of remote play. Well, yeah. so here, here's the thing. Remote play kind of works for some games. Yes. It, re it really depends on like the delay that the sort of game introduces via remote play. Cause Racing games are kind of time sensitive when it comes to input, right? Because it can be the difference between making the turn and going into mm -hmm. a wall. And yeah, <laughs> yeah. So, so having couch co-op over the little network, me the ew. fuck this Sherlock. Why is it recommending uh, broadband internet connection? Would you prefer they recommend because dialogue? fuck you? That's why. to what download it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Again, eight, because eight, fuck you, that's why. Eight, eight, 18 gigabytes <laughs> over uh, over 56k modem. How long mm -hmm. you figure that out, Jack? Air, air. 128k qualified as broadband where I used to live. Dude, nothing uh, puts me on my like a motion roller coaster quicker than when I see it's like arcade racer. Yes, love those. Linux support, good on you, mate. Followed by single player. Yeah. <laughs> And um, if you, you mentioned the trailer earlier, uh, if, if you actually go back and look at the trailer, there's a cursor on screen through most of it. Oh, really? Um, Hang on. 
Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, they say that it's based on night it's like a tribute to 90s games such as Mega Race, POD, Death Cars and Rides. Um Honestly, I wait, wait, don't wait. hate the look of it. Where's the cursor? In the first video or the second? The second one, I think. Your seat. Oh, it's there. <laughs> like in the lower left quadrant. No, it's the first one. Uh, seat. Okay. <laughs> oh, there it is. All right, hang on. Yeah. <laughs> Everyone at home. Yeah, Just, it starts out in the middle, and then it moves to the lower left quadrant, uh, so clearly uh, someone touched a mouse at some point. <laughs> Whoops. A little bit of V-Sync issues, yeah. 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 That, 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 that's, that's why but, OBS has the hide cursor option. <laughs> yeah, but honestly, the game doesn't look terrible, looks, and uh, I very much liked Wipeout, so I'd be pretty much down for this kind of racing mm -hmm. game. Yeah. <laughs> there was some game with a demo that I saw I didn't want to burn a heretic purchase on it. It was a spiritual successor to wipe out. It was like red eclipse or something like, I don't know. And it was built with U UE Ford. I mean, it was wipe out, man. It ran pretty well. Mm. I played well, with it. It's, 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 de it's definitely not red eclipse. Cause that's the next story. No, no, it was red <laughs> something. I was going to say, it was like, I know it's not that, um, pretty decent. Superman red sun. Speaking of, uh, <laughs> yes, that's why I was wearing a cape. That makes more sense. Um, one week older, we talked about this last week, Red Eclipse 2 turns seven days old. And you're like, this game's been out forever on Steam. That's kind of what we're hitting at. A uh, couple of new things. They've achieved a very positive review metric uh, with like 46 positive, which is good on them. This is an open source game. Play it for free on Steam. Bonus soda. People are actually playing the game. This is a good way to get your open source project in front of, you know, people's eyes and mm. their hands and their toes. They are Red making Eclipse. plans for Red Eclipse 2.1. And I just want to throw some like goodwill and love at them for getting it on Steam simply because we're shills for Steam. But also it's a fantastic <laughs> way. You know, you think even as a developer, Steam's like, hey, you want some of that free bandwidth? Yeah. You want yeah. yourself your own um, multiplayer VPN that you can basically have everyone play the game through? Steam yeah, tools, can. baby. Well, the, and the, the the whole right click join thing. Like, remember remember having to like punch in server IP addresses and forwarding ports. Yeah. You remember don't... Steam Spy? Yeah. <laughs> remember Game Spy? Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. The all seeing eye. <laughs> Dude. Roger Wilco. No, but like we're we're also open source shills, and it's it's good to see some open source representation on Steam. But uh, Steam's we're, we're, DRM. I, it, I mean, it can be. It can it have DRM. Uh, part of the Steamworks libraries include DRM if developers wanted to use them. And here's the thing: the developers who are likely to use them, they tend to use not just the Steamworks DRM. As well as the Nuvo and Securom and I I I, I will I will say this bullshit. though about about on the topic of like vendor lock in Valve is actually pretty good about that because like they offer oh, yeah. an open source version of Steam Sockets like no this is the same library if you don't mm -hmm. want to you if you want to develop your game with our networking tools but you don't want to use it on Steam here's the version that shuts all that shit off and you can still have the same API calls and whatnot. Uh, they did. They did that with Steam VR as well. They're pretty good about like, well, here's the stuff. If you want to use it, if you don't want to be on our platform, yep. please still use our stuff. Valve has been exceedingly cool in that area, and you know we've said it multiple times. You know because we're shills for Valve, but the the tool set they provide, that's where that cut comes from, as opposed to what? Yeah, you, uh, you expect a shopping cart. <laughs> <laughs> what you, you want you want a multiplayer function yeah. <laughs> here's another free game shut up monkey all right coming up next if you have an old 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 video card you might be very very pleased with some news we have coming up next also stephen hawking's vocorder if for some reason you'd like to see us in yoga pants what's wrong with you also well, there's a way you can uh, Have you basically seen fund the that. Internet. <laughs> I mean, I, I can I can put some yoga pants on my wish list. The hell do you mean if? <laughs> eh, fair enough. <laughs> <laughs> 
so Jordan, how can people fund your yoga pants? <laughs> uh, well, there, there are a number of ways to do that. If you want to see pictures of my sweet, sweet ass, you can head on over to linuxgamecast.com. The pictures aren't there. You have to go to one of the other links. If you mouse over the support <laughs> uh, menu items, um, we got, we got, a, we got a Patreon. We got LibrePay. Damn it! Now submerged. the site's getting scraped. Why do you say these things? <laughs> <laughs> hey, pal, links. We got, we got the aforementioned wish list. I'm gonna add some yoga pants later tonight. And some Bitcoin, but of course, the best way to support this nonsense is to head on over to patreon.com slash Linux Gamecast. Nope, um, looking for yoga pants. I said I, put, I said I put them later. Canadian yoga pants. <laughs> There's a definite lack of yoga pants. <laughs> you know, you, you, can, you, can, you, can, you can give me shit if you check in next week. Ooh. All right, well, I mean, if we're just going to look at pictures of butts now, I'm, I'm going to check it. I'm trying to find a tasteful pair for you. Mostly, I mean, uh, all, all all I see is pictures of butts, man. Yeah, oh. that there's a lot of butt. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> what if we got some with pockets? <laughs> I've seen those actually; they're so pointless. Um, but it, but anyways, yeah. Uh, p- Patreon.com slash Nixoncast. Become become a Patreon. Get access to uh, Discord. Get access to uh, when we play some games. Uh, we did some foobarring with the Jackbox um, last night. Last week of every month, man, we do the Jackbox attack, the Crackbox. Yeah. What's it? it? We are. Yeah, uh, the, the the plan is to do some uh, Vermintide on Thursday, so if you want to check that out. Being a Patreon is the easiest way to RSVP, because if you're paying us, you get a buy-in. Mm-hmm. That's pretty nice. Um, or access horse to like show that. notes is also pretty cool. We get the pre-pre-superstars, and if you want to hear our opinions on Star Wars, The Phantom Menace, you can Live. watch the pre-pre-super shows. <laughs> Um, that, that's an extra hour of Linux Gamecast goodness of us just warming up and talking shit. Is that a threat or a promise? Yes. Thought so. Yeah. Uh, we got, we got, we got wish lists. Uh, I'm, I'm going to put some yoga pants on there shortly. Pedro <laughs> also needs to put some yoga pants on there. And Ven needs I'll to put, put some, some hot pants. pants on there. We no. got to get some booty shorts for Ven. Dying to find Ven. I, I'm going to get a yoga ben booty hat. Shorts. <laughs> you haven't lived until you've. Uh, you know what? The idea of seeing Fen and Daisy Dukes kind of tickles me. <laughs> you think I, you know, like I would have the slightest <laughs> problem doing that? I, I mean, I mean, put put up or shut up, man. I'll wear yoga pants. Daisy yoga pants. I'll do it. I know. Um, we 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 got uh, but yeah, if you buy something off the wish list. <laughs> That big Too shiny busy reflective thing. about my thing. hot ass and yoga pants, aren't you? Yeah. <laughs> what ass? <laughs> um, yeah, that that shiny reflective thing that lets you creep on what Ven's doing is the fuck wall. You can get up on there if you uh, buy some stuff off our wish list. We gotta thank uh, Basil. He sent us some poops. Oh, dude, I got this thing. So, like, if I go off access, <laughs> come back in like that. But it's not just so I can. Do it. I'm totally going to be doing that a lot, though. Um, <laughs> Basil, you're monster, you're beast, you're awesome. You also wrote something on the um, thing that, against our better judgment, we read these. It says, boom, boom, from Basil. This is great. Um, Fair. Cool. Yep. Huge fan. <laughs> it really minimizes the boom, boom, and this is definitely one of the things that I would have never bought from. Like, this, these things are like a hundred bucks, dude. I'm like, yeah. Nice. Nice. So, well, thank, thank you. Thank you, Basil. Thank, thank you very much. In all fairness, it's not a butter. Has the butter maker been used yet? I'm still. I'm not yet. Not yet. Not yet. <laughs> I, I'm. I, I'm prepared. I just need to pick a recipe. Okay. Everybody, give Basil shout outs and remind. We're we're now officially in 2020 on Butter Watch. <laughs> I, I love that Blizzard Butter game. Watch 2020. <laughs> Can you can you play it in Proton? Speaking of NVIDIA drivers, um <laughs> Smooth segue, just like that. Yes. Smooth we, like butter. Leg drivers, man. Uh there's an update, man, for the old business. This is for the 34108. Just out. Supported products. And if you look at this, we're talking like seven series, six series. But the big thing this brings is support for 5X kernels. So, I mean, even if you have, like, old 160Ms and stuff like that, but I think the 8, big... 8,000s and 9,000 series. Quadro Sync 2, baby. <laughs> Grid KT. Ah, okay. Man, all, all the legacy shit. Fortunately, what, what I really think this is is for research labs and stuff that genuinely have, like, rows of quadros. 
They're still running oh, yeah. Scent, which is still on Kernel 3, though. But I guess mm, it's... They could be rocking and rolling like that. I saw, I think it was the... They showed up on eBay when I was looking. I'm always looking for like a Quadro to slap in this box for more rendering power. But it was one of their compute cards, like the K80, mm -hmm. which was like two Titan Xs on the same board, like 24 gigs of frame buffer. No cooler on it. Because it's designed for a rack. It's just got a heat sink with a hole through the middle. So yeah. it was fun going to YouTube watching the Rube Goldberg ways people were trying to uh, make that work. Plus, it's also a 300-watt card. So, yeah. <laughs> maybe I mean, you if you're driving two cool Titan Keplers uh, <laughs> off of a single board, yeah, <laughs> you're going to need a lot of power. It was great. It's like the card runs really good until you try to use it, then the computer shuts down. <laughs> Yeah, it idles real well. <laughs> yeah, you, 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 ever, you ever seen Chernobyl? You know how the thing just got like super hot and started melting towards the center of the earth? It's basically that with a GPU. Those yeah. are now showing up on eBay for like 300 bucks. Those were like $6,000 a couple of years ago. This is, this, is, this is why I don't feel bad about like waiting for shit to get cheap because yeah. like the, the the level of depreciation that happens in IT and computers is ridiculous. Like this was top of the line. I paid ten thousand dollars for it. Yeah, it's fifty cents on eBay now. Like, it yep. doesn't appreciate. That's cool though. I mean, seriously, uh, is anybody out there running? I would think you could still get away with playing like on a seven or, seventy or, 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 or seven eighty or, like or like a six eighty or something. Yeah. Yeah. Or Rocket like League. the old uh, 8600s and 8700s. I don't know if they ever released an 8900 series, but um, yeah, the old 8000 series was uh, the cream of the crop for a while there. And a lot of people bought into that particular family and it, yeah, I mean, just I'm, get I mean, a up, new driver going. Up up into the 4 Series cards, like, that architecture was still in use. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it wasn't until, yeah, the, it wasn't until, for me, kind of dethroned it with the 500 uh, Series that uh, it kind of made a difference. But this is the big, this is one of the things I keep pointing at whenever people say it's like, oh, NVIDIA and Linux, it's shit. Yes, there's a reason that Linus flipped them the bird. However, when it comes to support... I don't remember a single time when AMD ever gave a damn about their legacy stuff. Oh, you can still install Even FGLRX. When they were, mm. Yeah, when they <laughs> still of. had FGLRX going. And nowadays it just said, you know what, fuck FGLRX, fuck all that business. Oh, we no, have no, a proprietary no, no, module no, no. you can load into AMD GPU, and that's about it. <laughs> yeah, no, it was, the, it was the Crimson Driver that still had the FGLRX installer. It mm. still yeah. called everything FGLRX. <laughs> and the right version. Again, there's another way to look at this, though. That is very clearly well. I guess they're not going to be open sourcing anything soon. In no, no, oh, no, no. In February, <laughs> they're going to give a talk about how Nvidia is going to open source all their their driver stack. And and anyways, you know what? Oh, they might really walk headers. out there with like this picture that I have back here. Just light it. He's like, ta-da! <laughs> Fireworks behind right. it. Yeah. All right. So, uh, some some people don't want to install Lutris because it's difficult and stress. Yeah, so hard. Hard. Because uh, Mini Galaxy, apparently someone saw that, um, well, now the Galaxy 2.0 client is available for GOG. If for some reason you think that it's a good idea to shop for Linux games on GOG. Um, there's the whole DRM free thing, but eh, even that's iffy. Uh, well, now you can install Mini Galaxy version 0.90. And it is... Um, Honestly, I don't get it. I, I don't, because it's like, it, this is just for the native Linux games that are available on GOG, which are few and far between, and when you take that into account, isn't Lutris better than this in just about every single way? Because, uh, okay, Lutris doesn't allow you to uh, just do the incremental updates like the actual Galaxy client does, but neither does uh, Mini Galaxy. And um, if you're not online at all, um, this uh, Mini Galaxy client doesn't work. Yeah. At all. So, I, I mean, and this is basically it. It only works for Linux native games. Uh, you can view, install, and launch them, but you can't uninstall them, though. You still gotta bust out the old RM command. <laughs> you get fed up with playing... Seriously, um, what's the point? <laughs> yeah. Hard mode, man. Level a little. Come on. <laughs> 
It's like, I okay, mean, I don't want to give Strider um, any more credit than he's due, but he is due a lot of credit when it comes to Lutris. He's due um, about $25,000 worth of credit, apparently. Yeah, he is, and credit, you know, uh, epic money is uh, just as good as any money. Uh, eh, what the hell? Why not contribute this UI, if that is that is your goal, why not contribute that to Lutris Instead. Maybe he tried. It's under closed wound fix. Um, one of the things <laughs> that I, I'm very that happy a lot of that. <laughs> that that makes me every time Gog posts like, "Oh, we're getting ready to release a new public beta of 2.0," and all Twitter still all my brothers and sisters out there are lighting them up. I'm like, "What about the Linux client?" And I'm like, "What? No, shut up. No Witcher. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Gog. Thanks. Tuck's good." <sighs> It's thing 1.1 RC1V. We were all happy last year when we finally got some of that sweet, sweet multiplayer all over our face, chest, and neck. But 1.1 brings a couple of new things to the table. To me, I was like, oh, look, IPv6 support. I'm very happy about that. And, uh, you know, they're talking about, you know, adding a lot of polish to this, you know, fixing things, not really ripping anything out, not adding anything big, nothing sparkly, nothing terribly sexy. But... With the UI enhancements and all that, what I really, really, really want to see is not emojis, but they are now supported when chatting in servers. I know that was driving some people just, they were like, can't play the game. But if you can get past that glaring omission, which has now been fixed, I would like to see the uh, not totes, not Rocket League map. The football. <laughs> like, put a little love into that because that, that, that could use some love. Yeah, <laughs> it, it seems so delightfully ripe for fuckery. Oh yeah, no, and they have, they have a nice framework for adding like additional game modes now. So that's the nice thing about open source is people can just do it. Um, and yeah, the the deal with one point one is now that people have been like slamming on network multiplayer for a while, they've found some optimizations. They figured out what's wrong. They're gonna fix it which is nice. They're also looking at uh, dual licensing Super Tux cards so they can distribute it over Steam. That'll be nice when that finally happens. That'll make it a lot nicer than like, do I, did I keep that something? No, I didn't. All right, let's go clone that. Huh? Let's build it. And, no, yeah. I mean, there's a, there's a flat pack. You can just... There's a snap. Wait, is there a snap? There's probably an app image. <laughs> there, 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 there's, there's an iOS app for that. They also, they also have some high DPI fixes and a new spoon level Ooh. just in time for the new year indeed yes <laughs> listen, the future and is terrifying listen man they're getting ahead of some shit i mean yeah yeah and uh one of the things that shorten mentioned was uh the actually you know fixing everything so they can more easily distribute it uh over steam do going for the dual license type of situation and that reminded me it's like yeah yeah the, the game was on green light at one point and it got green lit mm -hmm. So, it's been a while. Um, it got greenlit back in 2017. Licensing. G I it's two years. <laughs> G the GPL and Steam don't play. That's Dude, it, okay. Come on, man. It took like 13 years. Well, to Valve did specifically say um, it's like no, uh, no part of the Steam client can uh, be affected by GPL if Linux distros were to include the Steam client in their repos. So, okay, fair enough. <laughs> Licensing. Okay. Yes. Emulators. He, he got Stroke. Version 1.7 or 107 <laughs> is released. It's you can you have to you have to build it yourself. Pedro went through that effort. I did not. Um so <laughs> TIL what a, what the hell a he gun is? It's a multi-system emulator. It can do Sega CD can do Neo Geo Pocket, Neo Geo Pocket Color, MSX, SG100, ColecoVision, uh, and Wonderswan, uh, as well as some uh, SNES and Game No Boy plans stuff. for 32X support? Boo. Boo! No. Um, <laughs> yeah, there, there's also, this release comes with a brand new UI that needs some testing. Uh, the guy recommends if you don't want to fuck around with the new UI, stick with the old version. Um, I was so, I, I brought I brought this up in the, uh, I brought this up in the, um, in between show, the, in, <laughs> Whatever segment, I forgot. <laughs> that what one, yeah. Called. That one. The thing where we're not recording this part that you're watching right now in the produced version. Um, yeah, so um, this guy, um, through his work on Hegan, um, he actually uh, did some emulation for a sound chip. 
um, that Stephen Hawking's uh, vo vocalizer was using. And when they stopped producing it, um, Stephen Hawking was actually using the extracted code from Hegan to speak to people in the last couple of years of his life, which I thought was kind of a neat little thing. That is this, this, it, it, it's a nice touch. And this, this goes to show you why doing the sort of legacy emulation is super important because there's still a lot of old software in use today by people who need it. Hmm. Yep. And, um, you know, Hagen in, in its defense, uh, the developer does say, it's like, this is my own project. I'm doing my own thing. I want something to, be, that is able to emulate these systems and that's it. Uh, so if you want more, go look somewhere else uh but i did you know it's like okay so they have a windows download the mac os download then they have the source code it's like all right fine whatevs you don't have the pre-compiled uh linux binaries i'll just build it myself and then i cloned the git and it's like um where's the instructions oh it's buried in the docs install linux cool right i found it it's like oh uh that's going to require a lot of um dependencies let's just go oh there we go the, there's the uh <laughs> there's the linux binaries in a completely different website that you actually need to click through and you'll find it uh but yeah no they are available and it does work i didn't have any um bin queues for sega cd i just downloaded the smallest uh rom i could find for the neo geo pocket and Allegedly. it works <laughs> it no, no, works. no, you, no! You got you got a rum dumper, and you got you got an old. <laughs> there we go. That's the ticket. <laughs> it yeah. may have been a homebrew. There we, yeah, it's even better. Sure, yeah. <laughs> Side step that whole thing. <laughs> Snake jazz. Rigelinjin the third. Is it is, is it Rigel yes. or Rigel? The third. Uh, it's Rigel. Let's go with Rigel. Rigel, Rigel, check this hey, out. I was making a very um, timely Farscape reference. <laughs> I got you. I got, I got you, man. I got you. Uh, but yeah, it's um, if you want to play Duke Nukem 2 uh, with an open source re-implementation, well, Rigel Engine is the engine that is very much working to it. Um, and Beta Not 5.0 is currently available for download. They do say that uh, with this new version, they've implemented the uh, options menu and widescreen mode. And most of the registered version of the game is now playable. But like Ven highlighted there, uh, you require Visual Studio 2019 redistributable. I didn't actually try to build this one from source, but... Uh, Come on, can we all just stop thing. and appreciate a screenshot of the video? Yes. yes. The play button. <laughs> I guess if you click on the video, it takes you to YouTube. <laughs> I'm scared, man. I don't know. <laughs> well, I've been I've been clicking I've been clicking play for five minutes and nothing's happening. This website sucks. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, it is uh, just yeah, Duke Nukem two um, with an open source re implementation, which is all very well and good as far as um, like being able to play old games goes open source re-implementations are probably going to be the way forward because much like nvidia you don't really see AAA game companies dishing out the sauce code for games so where are we at on like the ip for the game engine code i'm not talking about the assets or the assets and stuff like that because if a country was to like i don't know how it would feel where do we land on this is like say after 15 years the engine gets to be open source like make that a law oh if you make that into law stadia is going to become very popular very quickly I, well, that's the thing too is that engine engine code doesn't always exist in isolation they license other they license frameworks from other companies as well so mm -hmm. how, do, how does that work do you, do you have to just provide everything except for the other licensed bits, at which point you have to replace them with open source components? Well, you don't have to replace or... them with shit. You just release what... No, you... I, 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 I meant like so, someone who wanted to use it would have to. Oh, yeah, them. they would. I mean, yeah, other people's IP. Yeah, if you... I, I'm looking even at Even if it... you release just your, the source code on your end mm -hmm. that works with those APIs for that middleware, all of a sudden people could figure out a lot about that middleware, and all of a sudden the people behind that middleware wouldn't be terribly happy with not Never being able to make money. Never the internet, man. I mean, I'm just <laughs> oh, thinking, yeah, no. when, when I'm saying this, what I'm saying is I'm talking legitimately in an archival mindset. I'm like, to preserve this stuff. 
ideally, uh, yes, that uh, yeah, would in, be in, great, in, in, but it's in, not in a, in a going to happen. In a perfect world, sure, but we, we don't live in a perfect world. You can look outside. Yeah. <laughs> well, good thing there's emulation. Yeah, good, good thing that exists. RPC, <laughs> a RPC that. S3. <laughs> um, this is the progress report for September. You might be thinking, but Jordan, it's almost January. To which I say, I don't write these reports. In fact, volunteers write these reports for RPC S3. And if you want to get them out in a timely manner, you can volunteer your time. Um... But for September, uh, only a couple games were added to the playable list. A couple games were added to the um, in-game list. So yeah, it's it's just two. So there's 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 that. Um, what, what do I have in my notes? Yeah, the the games they have working currently are just a bunch of sports games uh, like uh, NBA and Top Spin, NCAA football. Is that near? Uh, yeah, it's the <laughs> uh, it's the first near. Yeah. Uh, uh, that 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 they they fixed some post processing effects in that as well, um, but yeah, uh, the big thing here is better USB hardware support. So for like Guitar Hero controllers and uh, Skylanders, um, which had like this pedestal where you had to go buy toys separately and scan the toys to get like the units in the game. Uh, now now you can just emulate all that shit. So <laughs> if you're a big Skylanders fan. You don't want to spend money. Our PCS three is the way to go. Um, <laughs> Yeah, they also have the first Thor game for the movie tie-in thing that that that's playable as well. Um, there was yeah, so it was the visual post processing USB support, um, and I think that was I think that was it. Yeah, um, the, the the USB uh, one was like the big one that happened in September, and uh, I added this to the notes because it's like, wait a second, this is December. Why are they releasing the September? Oh, okay, it's all done by volunteers apparently. <laughs> yes, so that's that's the thing. You should support these guys on Patreon because they're doing amazing yeah. work. Um, you should if you if you're willing to volunteer, give them give them yep. the ring because it's just like three developers right now who are mm -hmm. hacking away at this. Sure. Trying to get it up and running. Um, yeah. I mean, documentation, too. That's always something people always forget. I mean, they would probably love to have, you know, the documentation, like, translated to Canadian. Or, you know. Oh, yeah. Or um, or um, public relations. Like, mm -hmm. a lot of, you know, you know what? A lot of open source projects need good PR people to, you know, make people aware of the things that they are doing. Sure. Yes. I will <laughs> say that is an odd awesome project i'm fascinated with it and it's a better love story than cmu you know i know they're completely different things but i just don't like emulators <laughs> in general but this one if i was to like them this is this would be my day all right yeah I'm they're I'm actually doing a lot uh, mm -hmm. for actually just being able to emulate the uh, architecture of the ps3 and ha you heard the stories probably back in the day what people were having all these issues like game developers actually getting their games to work on that architecture and you have an example like skyrim on the ps3 where the dragons flew backwards it's a better love story than the xbox 360. <laughs> yeah it, yeah but, but between between these guys and dolphin they're, they're doing some pretty good work coming oh, yeah. up next we're throwing chairs at heckblade Sa samuel samuel snacks Samuel Snackson. Snacks. Squeeze it hard. Welcome back to the Chairquisition, where the accused must survive trial by Fedora. Neon, Debian, and only then can the question be asked. Is it fun for the last Chairquisition of the year of 2019? We're taking a look at Hellblade, Senua's Sacrifice by Ninja Theory, done on Unreal Engine 4. You can pick it. You could have you if you were like us and you picked it up on sale for ten bucks. If you have some cheap nice. bastards, yep. yep. <laughs> Other, otherwise, it's going to set you back about thirty bucks. Uh, from the makers of Heavenly Sword, Enslaved Odyssey to the West, DMC Devil May Cry comes a warrior's brutal journey into myth and madness set in the Viking Age. A broken Celtic warrior em embarks on a haunting vision quest into a Viking hell, which is just hell with one L. Viking. Um, to find the soul of her dead louver. Oh, shit. Uh, yep, no no mandatory disclosure. Like I said, we all bought this on sale because it was dirt cheap. Dude, is there an award this game did not win? Best puzzle solving. Yeah. We'll get, right. we'll, get, we'll, we'll, <laughs> we'll get to that. Anyway, how, how did it work on Ubuntu, then? Dude, over here on uh, Ubuntu 10.2, the new hotness. <laughs> Our, uh, 
fucking Debian, whatever. <laughs> I was running Ubuntu for a minute there, man. Why did you crush my dreams? Because that's what I do. I crush Damn on it. your dreams. Okay, fine. Now I'm on I Debian 10.2. Like, smack uh, on your buns. 1920X, 32 gigs of RAM, 2060. Not wearing a cape, just the regular unleaded version. It's a one-click install with the old Proton 411-11. That's the current version. If you're playing the home game, uh, again, on the capeless 2060, it swings between 65 and 75, but that's with everything slammed all the way to 11 and um, at 1080p because that's kind of where, I, you know, the performance I expect is an Unreal Engine 4 joint. So fair enough. They, you know, the graphics look at them and they work, but this is kind of one of those deals where you can't tell if you're experiencing any glitches non-intentionally. <laughs> Because it's one of those games. You know what I'm uh, talking Observer about. Observer was rife with that. Ooh, dude, yeah. that one just fucked with you hard. This one, you're like, oh, it's kind of part of the thing. The It does contain, fair warning, a bunch of wooski motion blur and uh, blinky bink lights. So if that makes your little tum-tum hurt, you want to avoid this like an online game that requires EAC, baby. Now, it does a good job being Proton, you know, being one and all that handling windowed and full screen mode. So... Good on that. Sometimes that can be an issue. And with controls out of the box with the X-Clone and Steamy, I didn't automatically work with the PS4 controller, but that's probably something I cocked up, but I didn't try it hard enough because, hey, man, I played this with the X-Clone. Quality assurance. A passing, passing score. And four. Cheers. Yeah, so on uh, Fedora 3064-bit, or... No, yeah, it's still 30 on this one. Um, with the i7 6700K and GTX 1080 Ti, there was a couple nopes when I was messing around with the settings. But like, once you actually get into the game proper, I actually had to sit through the um the intro twice where she's rowing down the stream because like after I got off the boat, I'm like, I'm gonna knock this to 1080p. Fatal error. Uh, but you know, <laughs> once once you get back in game, it worked fine and it actually saved the setting, which is nice. Um. But um, yeah, performance-wise, it's str- it struggles apparently. What I wrote down in the, in the show notes it struggles to uh, touch about forty eight frames a second at uh, UHD, but holds a cool eighty to eighty eight on the ten eighty p graphics-wise. Very very pretty. I quite like it. Um, and control um, works with the DualShock Four if you're using Steam input. But 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 but, and I'll get to this in the fun segment. You uh, want to change your target with this guy. Um, you, you can't, I didn't try with this guy, which may have fixed it. I don't know, but I'm not going to ding it a chair for it. It gets four. And over here, but, it, um, I think on I'm a forgetting bunch of, something. Yeah. Yes. Uh, on, um, Katie Neon, uh, it, uh, works out of the box and on, um, KDE Neon on El Cheapo, it also works out of the box. So that's an i5-34, uh, 3470 and um an amd rx 570 as well as the uh, ryzen 3700x and the gtx 1080 so both those configurations worked out of the box uh over here uh on this box it holds around 60 ish 65 and sometimes it comes down to like 57 56 um at 2560 by 1440 even with v-sync off so that's not an issue and v-sync in this game actually does lock it uh if i put it down to like uh 1080p it does lock it at 144 hertz so that's good uh, on El Cheapo, it holds around 40-ish at 1080p. Um, there's some herky-jerks during the set-piece transitions, like this cutscene that you're looking at right now. Um, graphics, yeah, it's hard to tell what shouldn't and should be there. Um, I usually don't care about the chromatic aberration effect in games. I don't usually notice it, but I noticed it here. I also noticed a god uh, god awful motion blur, but you can turn both of those off by pushing the post processing down to low, but that also brings the uh, anti aliasing down considerably. Um, I ended up just going to the config file and disabling those, but they do give you an option to disable them. It's just not very uh, evident as to what it may be. Controls uh, with a seam controller. 
it works out of the box, no issues whatsoever. Uh, with the DualShock 4, like Jordan already mentioned, you need to enable Steam input for it to pick up properly. So there's that. But it does work, so four chairs. Oh, well, there you go. Heckblade is a heckin' good time if you're trying to get it up and running. But is it fun? Eyeballs. Um, man, I'm trying to remember what's going on in this cutscene. Uh, she's being she's eaten <clears throat> being eaten by Volrovin. Yep. Oh, <clears throat> nom 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 nom. Uh, check it out. So, brass tacks. You can thin your way through this. You can make a V line straight through this game in about eleven hours, and that's not going full force. That's taking the time to listen to some of the lore and you know check out the scenery. But at its core, get ready to spill up your redrives. Hellblade is what it is, man. It's kind of a walking simulator. I mean, it's very narrowly focused. You know, anyone familiar with it? what's required to deliver the level of visuals that this game does, you kind of assume that you're going to be in a tight, narrow path. Just what's required to render that. But let's not start hating on it because Ninja Theory, small team managed to deliver top-notch visuals, sound design, and most importantly, Picard.jpg or GIF acting, man. Uh, not to mention a compelling story about delivering Bay's head organ. That's your boy on your back right there to the underworld because reasons i love this boss um really got my hopes up when i played this uh first two hours genuinely some of the best gameplay like as a whole that i've experienced in recent memory one of the reasons we're taking a look at this but kind of the downsides here that two hours is going to repeat itself over 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 keep going more overs and yeah over it goes like this man you you, you walk you're going to walk some more. You're going to telepathically communicate with some rocks and visually align some shit and occasionally walk through a circle. Sounds about right. That's about right. Oh, you can sometimes stab as you're witnessing right here. But on the topic of stabbing, it's hella simple, but completely serviceable, man. You get your light attack. You get a heavy attack mixed with like a kick, which will get you dead because the timing on that kick's a pain in the ass. Oh, the, the, the wind up, man. Yeah. The wind up. Yep. But you can dodge. You can parry. And, uh, I mean, it works. It's nothing fancy, but it has weight to it. And you know, impact when you're slashing and kicking occasionally, it gets the job done. But you know what? By the end of this ride, you're going to be sick. Well, you're going to like the combat, but what you're going to be sick of is finding new and creative ways to align random shapes, because that's really all this outside of the great story gameplay. That's it. I mean, you will be saying, more of this, more, because that's what it is. More of this. But you know what? With all the flaws, I liked it. I did. I look forward to seeing what Ninja Theory comes up with the next one. If you watched our live stream, when this came up, I'm like, yes. Okay. I, I'll take this one. This one's good for what it is. You know, it's interactive story with some pretty decent combat. This next one, I'm really excited to see what they do. I'm going to say, you know what? Catch this on sale, you know, for 10 quid. It's worth the price of admission if you know what it is going into it. So, you know, all that said, I'm going to give it a sort of one, man. I, I think I'm comfortable. I could probably give it a three if maybe we saw some more puzzle variety character development, like new weapons or abilities and skills. It's just not there in this first one, but I think it might be in the second. Yeah, um, so Hellblade has a really strong narrative, and unfortunately, it's kind of spoon-fed to you in a linear manner. Um, and if that if that's your thing, that good good for you. That's not necessarily my thing. I I really would have liked a lot more variety in the kind of stuff you can explore because, like, the best I found was there there was there was a secret that was basically just one of those rune stones that has a lore dump for a bunch mm -hmm. of Viking mythology that I already know because I'm a big old geek. Um, and the world is also like very pretty. It's, it's it's like desolate. It's isolating, and I I I think they could have played a little. So I I know one of one of one of the one of the big deals with this game is that they worked with a lot of uh, neuroscientists and they worked with a lot of people who actually suffer from psychosis to come up with like um a semi accurate depiction of what people with that kind of psychosis go through. Um, and may maybe mechanizing it uh, beyond what they did would be considered disrespectful. I don't know. As someone who engages in a lot of negative self-talk, um, some 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 of those voices are a little too real, man. A little too real. 
when uh when when my internal monologue starts agreeing with them then we we got we got some problems um and yeah the the puzzle solving is basically just find a way to align the shapes so many <laughs> shapes need alignment <laughs> and sometimes it's like no this is the shape that you're looking for no but it's not the exact shape that i'm looking for um the, oh the, did the you run into like the fuck you game it's aligned no, yeah, for, the for, angle for, is just slightly off, so yeah. fuck you. Yeah, 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 yeah. There, there, there's definitely that. Also, uh, when you first get into search realm, you have to find the N, then you have to find the Y. I'm like, there are eight things here that meet this requirement. What the fuck do you want from me, game? Follow the screams! They're my screams, motherfucker. Um, <laughs> but yeah, um, the combat, I don't know, maybe it was because I was using the DualShock 4 via Steam input, but... I found the fights profoundly unenjoyable simply because once you get to the shield guys, I could not change my target and they were the guy I was locked on. And so I would just get corner fucked by the, a bit of the dark souls camera that the, this thing has going on. Pedro it's like, Oh, well you don't get the full, uh, you get what? Yeah. Dark souls is a bit more forgiving with the field of vision in this game. But it's my, narrow. <laughs> my point still stands. The camera will fuck you up, especially when you're locked onto the incorrect enemy that you're trying to fight. Uh, see, I couldn't do any of that. I couldn't. I couldn't swap targets. That was. I was just locked on. Um. Yeah. So that and was that with the Dual Shock too. <laughs> weird. I don't know. I don't. So, here's here's the thing though. Is that set piece fights don't usually do it for me. I don't like being trapped in an arena and forced to just fight a bunch of waves of dudes. I prefer games that allow me to sort of like use the terrain to my advantage. Uh. But you know what? That that's just me. That's uh. That's a personal preference thing. Um, the story is fantastic. Uh, it's pretty well acted and yeah, the, the, I, I actually kind of like the backseat gamer mechanic because in the, in the, in the absence of a HUD, the voices, your, your furies or whatever are the ones who like inform you. Oh, you have no health left. Oh, there's someone behind you and so on and so forth. And I thought that was a neat way to do it. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm gonna give it two chairs. I kind of wish the combat was a little better and uh, some more puzzle stuff, but this is room for improvement for Hellblade 2, as Ven was saying, so. Might be a thing. Yep. And as much as I like the story, I can't help but feel like the gameplay is a little bit obtuse. You're going to have to do... I first fought this boss. I had my hopes up. Yeah. Uh, you're going to have to do exactly what the game wants you to do in that exact order, and there's no variation you can have whatsoever. Um, it's run until you find a door, solve a quote-unquote puzzle, beat some dudes, and do it again. Uh, there's no point in exploring until you hit one of those doors and you get the chromatic aberration effect all over the place. Um... Yeah, the, there's no point in exploring at all, and it's linear almost to a fault. Uh, maybe it's to lead you by the nose down the plot that's been set out for Senua. Maybe it's that, yeah, that they didn't have um, the necessary amount of money uh, to make exploration a thing, so they made it as linear as they could. But being linear doesn't automatically make a game obtuse and the best example i can think of is like half-life 2. it's a linear action game that tells a story without compromising on the gameplay and it tells that story through the gameplay in hellblade by comparison the story is literally told to you it's the voices in your head and um i guess jordan uh could uh, comment on how good the representation of uh, the voices in one's head uh, is in this game. But how full of yourself do you have to be to have one voice actually narrate your life story, at least the bit we get to see uh, in the game? There are like three voices. Yeah, the, the narrator is... Uh, th that one narrator that sounds very much like Senwa. Uh, she a does a very actress. good job. Yeah, <laughs> well, uh, very good job on the actress because she sounds exactly like the main character. Uh, but yeah, it's um, kind of, you know, pull of yourself, that one, but whatevs. Uh, it is a good story, and it is one I will see, true, uh, th see through, uh, but as a video game, 
it could have been done better kind of like my attempt to read what i wrote in the show notes there uh, but it does look pretty good and it sounds amazing and while the combat is very much a bit stilted it's like budget dark souls with a much narrower field of view um it's still pretty fun and i didn't hate it at all so three cheers yeah, well there you go it's it's all right and if you can get it on sale for cheap should definitely pick it up it's definitely worth it man um also a full disclaimer the game looks a lot better when you have like all the bad shit flying around in it with the um motion blur and everything else hmm. yeah no Pedro's motion blur video doesn't is look a good. very sterile experience because you're blind Mo motion blur does not look good it, i still left chromatic aberration on for the recording of this video but i disabled motion blur this, this gets, looks a little it does too not look good crisp it doesn't have that grit it's, to it it's not, it's not muddy <laughs> yeah it well you know in like there's never even the cutscenes. everything's in engine in this game so oh absolutely absolutely yep. yeah like all, 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 all the all the face tracking stuff is like super well done. You know the uh, lady I was watching a thing uh, that did the mocap for her. She's got like a straight up Nordic accent, man. Like I was like, damn, why did they use your voice? Oh no, they find well, well, the right actress to uh, well, well, play well, Senua. So, <laughs> so that's that's the thing though. Uh, Senua Senua's a picked, which means she's Irish. Um, mm -hmm. So yeah, mm -hmm. whatever. <laughs> Deedly D potatoes. Up next, we got we got a larger ish hate mail segment to close off the year. That's nice. Uh, we learn about the perils of Java in Linux Gamecast. Java, Java, Java. the drink. And I guess this is the end of 2019, and this with it comes the end. the end of the last LGC uh, of 2019. Yeah. And chances are friends. over. The past uh, 52 weeks, or 51 weeks as the case may be, um, we probably said something that pissed you off, nope. probably said something that Nothing was wrong. Was. I know I did. Uh, <laughs> but you can First totally... First rule of LGC Club, never admit you're wrong. Eh, man, I've then, broken that rule so many times. Double down on so it. So many times. But uh, you can actually point out when we're wrong or when we're right or when you feel like you'd like to uh, let us have a look at your game. Because for some reason, some people f seem to think that that's a good idea. I'm just more, you can I'm go more, to linkskimcast.com. Scott, put the kid down. <laughs> <laughs> That's, that's near. But yes, you can go to linkscapecast.com at the contact button. That's where you'll find the form. That's uh, LGC Weekly is the show you want to send your hate mail to. And uh, we'll be happy to feature it right here, right now. If you do decide to, you know, let us have a look at your game, make sure you include three keys or a build that we can share. Otherwise, we'll just make fun of you. And hey, and you're a beautiful person. Your you're an awesome person. Thing. If you'd like to come hop on the show, we would like to have you. Come party with us on a Saturday night and be sexy and sparkly and all that fun stuff. Is that what you're yes. going to say? <laughs> I will be gone for the next and the one after that. Uh, LGC, so there's that. <laughs> so if you'd like to uh, be a part of it, you totally can. All right. Go figure. Fine. Take on Pedro. Take, take, on, take on Pedro. Pedro. When? Oh, uh, are you done? <laughs> all right, all right, all right, well, Damn it! We got, we, got, we, got, we, we got our first bit of hate mail from from Keegan Kagan. Not sure how to pronounce it. Says, Krieger? No, what? no, Krieger. <laughs> His name is Fisto Roboto. Oh no! Fully sapient sexual entity. <laughs> Piggy. And the best part is he's learning. Anyways, uh, this is from Keegan, and they say, "No offense, but I've followed you guys for several years, and I gotta say, your office awesome. You wound us. How dare you? How?" Dare you? How dare, sir? Ouch! <laughs> Ouch! Pedro, you you were happy about it. You you immediately like texted Nori, and you're like, "Oh my god, they really like me." They like us. They really. You like have us. no idea. <laughs> I I don't, man. It was. <laughs> I didn't know you could move that fast. <laughs> Uh, no, let's just say that I was looking as you were pasting these links into the show notes. It's like. Yeah. 
<laughs> like, I don't even mm-hmm. need yoga pants for this. <laughs> I just, I, when I need, My when, ass when is I, popping out so much right now. <laughs> what I need is some mayonnaise. Mayonnaise? Why do you need mayonnaise? You always say give me mayonnaise. What do you do with all the mayonnaise? <laughs> I make egg salad. You ever try um, Hell Elks? It's a great brand of mayonnaise. See, this is just a picture on a wall <laughs> with some socks. Yes. Written. And then, then you scroll back. Yes, it is. <laughs> Hoplo. He's like, yo, check this out. Hell Elks is a guy. Wait, what the Hell Elks is a guy to do to be? Oh, I can think of many things in the morning, but enjoy family, coffee, and me. Hmm. <laughs> ah. <laughs> if you have I see pictures, someone decided to, <laughs> to um, use their money wait, wisely. <laughs> if, you, if you have Just, photographic evidence of you enjoying me. <laughs> <laughs> feel free we are shameless whores and we definitely post pictures of that yeah Maybe. i what mean you, think, you can totally enjoy it then just uh don't send us anything that will get us banned off twitch i, I mean I'm, I'm 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 still i'm still dubious on the fact that anyone can enjoy them but you know what I'll, i i welcome photographic evidence there was <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> do you need at a least disturbing? a tweet, <laughs> dude. I mean, I mean, what, what, one, one is anecdotal. We need more than one. Oh well, I'll show you Carlos's from last week. Oh, all right, <laughs> sample size of one. Oh, but uh, while Fen's looking at that, uh, Liz uh, had something to say. Fen, you know, over the years you've gotten hotter. Damn right. But your co-stars have gotten hairier. A little bit. A little bit. <laughs> I, I, I mean, I, I certainly have. <laughs> Just listen, we, we are all going to have, yeah, yeah, Pedro, if you shave Pedro, he looks like he's 10. Maybe. If you shave me, I look like Jesus. <laughs> I think uh, that's very kind of you, Ven. <laughs> 10. Hey, we still got to get you into bars. I mean, come on. Um, <laughs> we'll all eventually uh, have the male pattern baldness fairy visit us. So, yeah. Yep. There we go. <laughs> and you know, mine's probably going to start like there. There. <laughs> you know you fucked yourself just then. Now it's going to start like on the a the other side of your head. And, and... <laughs> no, it, it, it's going to start here and start slowly like migrating over the top over to the other side. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dude, I'm worried. I got a scar running from like here to here. It looks like a really sweet like parting line, but I would never wear my hair like that. So. You should like get a little tattoo that's just like two eyeballs. Make a There's some stitches. Like, mm, that that'd be fun. But we're not gonna do that because that'd be our work. Uh, I mean, so, I mean, I mean, what, what's your, what's your opinion on head tattoos while while we're here? Uh, we're my buddy stage. Matt has a compass on top of his head, but um, he's a bar manager and restaurant manager, and uh, he can get away with it because yeah, <laughs> he's the boss. Run your uh, own business, kids. <laughs> yeah, pretty much, man. <laughs> Then you can dress however the fuck you want. <laughs> yep. <laughs> if you're going to get a tattoo, though, uh, LGC Pro Tip, get it on your head. Because face, if you... Face stats. Face stats? Face stats. Nah. It'd be like stitches. Get 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 a, get an AK tattooed, like, right on your cheek. <laughs> ah, stitches. I throw that I brick in your face! On that... Now what you gonna do with it? Wonderful piece of life advice. You know what? I'm gonna, I'm gonna scroll down. I'm still thinking about Jordan with a face tat. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm get the, I'll get the Chicote. You've got to cue the music for the last time in 2019. Hey, man, we want to thank every single one of you beautiful party people for showing up, hanging out with us. There's nothing better to do. Not even for us, like right now. You're like, geez, man, come on. Hurry up, New Year's. We will uh, be back next week. Same moon time, nine, no, 8.30 Eastern Standard Time. If you want some of that nonsense, uh, scream at Vin Stone. I'm always there and in your belly at Vin Stone on uh, Twitter. It's thing. It's kind of beautiful. I'm not in your belly, but you can find me in your other organs. I am Jordan Swung. You can find me on Twitter at The Burning Fool. Occasionally on our Mastodon at MastodonLinksGameCast.com. I'm Frojo. And this guy, you can find your toilet. Thankfully, you can't find me in any of your organs, but yes, like Jordan mentioned, you can find me in your toilet. God damn you, I was gonna go there. Well, I am Ah at unaccounted for on Twitter, or 
Well, you can't really say plus potato potatoes anymore. That doesn't exist anymore. In in our hearts, Google Plus exists. <laughs> Try doing a show with two people it's definitely dead. allergic to social media. It's awesome. <laughs> Dive out. We're going to roll some credits. And thank you. Because you are making it possible. There was way too little smooching for this episode. Gotta, gotta save something for the New Year's. Like yoga pants. Yeah, definitely not enough sexy in this one. Yeah, you, you know, y'all can kiss my ass. I gotta thank all the Patreons, especially our executive producers like Artharin and Mr. Foxdog and Chemti and the Atomic Ass and Michael G. You got Barb Ramps. You got all these. Haplo, Mac Geek, and Scoot. <laughs> and just the regular producers who we love slightly less, like Jupiter Broadcasting. <laughs> And um, he's single. Strider and uh, Penny, Pennywise, the Sildat, Colin Ryan, Vlodnir, the, 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 the other Ryan, Nick, the other Jordan, Joe Angel, Dublo, Mr. Alert, Mr. Alert <laughs> Rohit, Massavoni, Tabo, Zoe, Bland, and the Massa um, Massavoni Grayson, again, Bullets, Jack, Jer Mini Jer Jack, 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 Massavoni, Dirty Jill, Dean, Jagar, Gonzo 2000, Jillian, Brock, Belric, Carl! Carl! That's not Carl. Not enough baby hands. Carl. Whitey's gotta pay. We got, we, we, got, we, got, we got no fucks to give this week? Apparently not. Fuck has <laughs> been reset, we're, bitch. When are you gonna we're, get we're that at, we're, we're out of fucks oh, for 2019. Yeah. <laughs> it's the happened. fuck wall is behind Ven now. It's uh, <laughs> That's the one that you, matters. <laughs> you can use it to creep on what he's looking at. Carl, Mike G. I need to get you one. And Basil. Five dudes. <laughs>